Tom Shagel would be, a, he, he was on our congressional staff. Was he, um, did he have the mobile van? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about the mobile van? I find <laughs> that very interesting. Yeah, after Stan's re-election to a full term, because mm -hmm. when he was elected in March, it was only to fulfill a term, okay? And um, so once he ran in November and was re-elected. Uh, I don't know when that started. He, Tom was not the first driver. Uh, oh, in fact, that, that's another name, Jeff Follinsby. G-E-O-F. G-E-O-F. F-O-L-L. F-O-L-L. A-N-S. A-N-S. B-E-E. -E. B -E -E. Uh, but that was a short duration. Anyway, Stan made the decision that he wanted to have a mobile office because the district was so big. It's even bigger now, but it was big enough then. And so we had a, a Midas mini home, a uh, travel uh, motor home. And uh, Tom would travel the district in the motor home. And he would go, for, he'd set up his own schedule. He was on his own. Uh, other than when, when Stan was in the district, and then Stan would, you know, make what, whatever his schedule was, then Tom took him where he needed to be. Uh, but during the week, Tom would be probably two times a week. Tom, I better tell you, two or three times a week, he would be on the road holding office hours. And it could be in Olean, it could be in somewhere in Allen, any of the counties. <laughs> That, uh, that were in, when we were elected, I think it was still the 39th Congressional District. I'm pretty sure it was. So, anywhere within our district, he would go and hold office hours, a couple of hours here in Olean, a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there. So, yeah, that's what Tom did. In addition to, Tom did all of Stan's military casework. Oh, okay. Because he is a veteran. Uh, knew the system, and so he he was in charge of doing all anything that had to do with military or veterans. He took care of when he wasn't driving his little van around. Did so. uh, Stan ever go into the van and travel with him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, there would be occasions where whatever Stan's schedule was, Tom would drive him in the van. Okay. Or motorhome. Yeah. Uh, not a lot, not a lot, because the purpose of it was strictly as a mobile office. In other words, there'd be a representative there. If you had a problem, you went in and talked to Tom about it. So. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you first meet Stan? 72, I started working for him. Yeah, I did not know him before that. Okay. And did you jump on board because he asked you, or was it like... There was an opening available after he became mayor. I was working at the time. A friend of mine who was working at, worked at City Hall, was working for Stan. We used to communicate a lot because we do, both did personnel work. Mm -hmm. And he would call and ask if I'd interviewed any. They might be looking for somebody at City Hall. and. Uh, just simply called one day and said Stan was looking for a, uh, an assistant and in the office was I was I interested I said no I mean I, I and I wasn't and he said would you at least go out and talk to him just that's all I'm asking and I said okay and I did and then I went to work um, with his campaign for mayor he has the blue ribbon ticket can you mm -hmm. tell me more about that Probably not a whole lot. Um, it was just simply called that because of the group that he had assembled uh, to run for uh, with him in the council, and they that was the name, kind of the theme, mm -hmm. so to speak, the blue ribbon ticket. But I mean, it didn't it didn't mean anything other than it was a uh, 
what they felt was a, you know a really really good strong team. Okay. So it was just really sort of a theme. More so a theme. Do you know anybody I could contact? I'm just trying more? to think of that. That's a good point. Chuck Hall probably would be able to give some information. I believe. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to venture. I do know. I do know the council people, candidates that ran with Stan. I know several of them are, have passed away. I'm going to ask a, more of an open-ended question. Um, what was your favorite story with Stan? Like, kind of get that personal aspect into the exhibit. Is there a favorite story or a favorite time or something that sticks out about Stan that should be mentioned personality-wise? I guess the thing that all of us as a staff admired about him was the fact that it, no matter how bizarre, uh, well, maybe this could lead into a story, no matter how bizarre your thought was about doing something, he wanted to hear it. He wanted to know about it. Okay, you know, why do you feel this way? Or why would you do this? Or why do you think I should do it? And I, re I, I cannot relate what, the, what my idea was, but I elaborate. I remember just talking and talking and talking about it, and Stan never said a word. He was just sitting right there like you are, looking at me, listening intently. And then he said to me, Pat, you have some really good ideas. That's not one of them. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> but no, no, that was, yeah. and that's good. That was good. Because we always had a chance to vent. We always had a chance to make our case. Some of it was, oh, yes. And some of it was, so. That, but that is one that comes to mind real quick. Good. Um, the theme that I was, the working theme title to my exhibit I was thinking of is Problem Solver and Public S Servant. And do you, how do you feel about that title? Do you Perfect. think that accurately fits him in this Perfect. description? And the reason I say that is he was extremely, um, um, the important thing of the time he was in Congress was constituents, constituent case. We were heavy on constituent casework, uh, all three offices, Jamestown, Olean, and Elmira. Very, very important. And he was back here um, almost every weekend, and it wasn't just to relax, it was to be out on the road or to be, you know, fulfilling a schedule, that type of thing. So uh, that was very... Legislation obviously was very important to him, but we better be doing our job out here. Mm -hmm. And that was constituent casework. And that's probably where the mobile van even came in helpful, mm -hmm. just to hear voices and mm -hmm. hear problems. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me, like, he was known as a problem solver and people describe him as such. Is there a specific problem that he solved that really sticks out to you that he solved in a well, it would mostly be, if, if, from my perspective, it would mostly be casework related. So, uh, if there was a particular problem in the district um, that came up and we would schedule him to meet with wh whoever or whatever. Um, uh, where was I going with this? Um, that then he would personally become involved in. If we didn't have to involve him, that's better because that takes the pressure off of what he's doing. If it can be solved in the district office, that would be preferable. But not all of it could be solved. You, you had to go to him sometimes so that he could make that contact with whoever we felt that he needed to, plus he had the clout. We had a certain amount of clout when we called from Congressman Lundeen's office, but truth of the matter is, there were some things that obviously the man had to do it. Yeah. So, on a constituent basis, again, that's one of those things I'd really have to go back and think because, you know, I spent a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, I can, I know of various things he intervened, or we would ask him to make the phone call to whatever agency it was, but I, nothing is coming into my mind right at the moment, but I can give that one some thought. Um, a lot of Stan's intervention in constituent casework would probably be more with municipalities. In other words, if there's a municipality, sometimes a business that might have a difficulty or whatever with a federal government agency. Those would be the two areas that he probably would become more involved in or have to become more involved in than, uh, say, my making a call or one of our caseworkers making a call. Is that kind of like the Chrysler um, fail? That would be more taken care of out of Washington because that okay. dealt, yeah, that dealt with something entirely different than, than here, okay. than in, in the district. Um, it would be his intervention, say this is an example, on behalf of Corning Glass or on behalf of SKF or on behalf of Dresser Rand and Olean or St. Bonaventure University, yeah, okay. that, that type of thing. Okay. Um, the Labor Management Committee, I've read several places that that was a very important part of his time as mayor and he did a lot to I have economic development. I have a and, whole book on that, if that would help you. Yeah, that I'm pretty would help. sure I still have it. I wonder why you keep certain things. They're useful. Like when I was at Bama's, I work with Dennis Frank, the archivist, and he always goes off about how people throw away valuable things because they think it's useless, and then it's things we can use in the future. Okay, when I get home. I will check. I'm pretty sure I still have the book, it, and it's one of the books, a definitive book that we did um, on the history of the Labor Management Committee, and I'm pretty sure I still have it. Mm -hmm. So if I do, I'll get that right yeah, back to you. Because that was a pretty big chunk of his time as mayor, correct? Correct. Probably one of the major things, um, that and urban renewal, mm -hmm. and not all, not all urban renewal was you know, obviously people weren't happy with it. Yeah. But he took the initiative and said, this is what we're doing. He tried to get the ball rolling. He did, he did get it rolling. Yeah. And there are those that still hold it against him to this day. So, <laughs> one of those things. So, in 76, Hastings resigned from the congressional seat. He, and He held the seat for a number of years. And um, it was... What caused the Democratic Party of this district to choose Stan? Like, why did he stand out more so than others for this seat? Or why do you think, I don't, like... I don't recall who all of those individuals were that said, I'd like to be the congressman from this district. I just don't remember that. <laughs> there were several. Probably, it wouldn't be uncommon for every county to submit somebody, and what they then, the, the, the individual committees, Democratic committees in each county would, let's just use Chautauqua County as the example, Stan says to the, to the chair of the county committee, I, I'm going to run, I want to run, I need your endorsement. He needed an endorsement from each county, so he makes his presentation. I don't recall if there was anyone else from Chautauqua County that was interested. Um, Bill Permit might have been, mm. but once he knew Stan was interested, he backed off. And Stan had to make his case to each county chair, each Democratic county chair. And then after whoever, all those people that were interested in running, and I don't remember how many there were, once they'd made their case, then all of those chairmen had to sit down and decide who they would endorse, and they ended up endorsing Stan. Okay. Just think about the process, and that's crazy how there's so many different steps. And uh, yeah, yeah. Depending on how big the district is. Um, now there are some congressional districts. I don't know about now. But at that time, there were some congressional districts that only included, say, three counties or two counties. 
uh, probably no less than two. In fact, I, I can't imagine there's probably many. Well, no, mm -mm. no. And at that time, if I remember correctly, I think the 39th congressional district was six counties: mm -hmm. Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, Allegheny, Steuben, and Chemung. That was the original 39th. And then as we kept losing population, we kept grabbing another county. So, but those, I believe, I, and I, it, it might even be in that book, I, I believe those were the original six counties in the 39th district. Mm -hmm. so, but that's the process you go, anybody would go through if that seat opened up wherever it is in that district. Uh, then that individual would go through that same, Democrat or Republican, would go through that same process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when he was in Congress, one of the things he did was the um, West Valley Vehicular. Mm -hmm. Can you Big. tell me a little bit more? Um, Again, you need to talk, be talking to someone that's all legislative. Okay. Uh, that's probably one of his biggest legislative undertakings. Uh, West Valley, just real quick, was a depository for nuclear waste. And uh, West Valley is a small rural community in Allegheny County, I think. Or was it? It's near Springville, right? Yeah. Like Allegheny. El because there was a confusion of whether it was in Erie County or in Cattaraugus County. Sorry, I think I misspoke. I think it's Cattaraugus County. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it had accepted nuclear waste for a long time. And then they were going to decommission it. And then that's when Stan prepared the legislation. Uh, to decommission and figure out a way of shutting it down. Again, that's all legislative, so oh, I know uh, the district offices only. Well, in fact, it was it was the Jamestown office because I I can't tell you how many meetings I attended in West Valley. I never even knew where West Valley was. Um, but my, or the district office involvement was strictly um, to attend meetings when he couldn't, or if there was a function going on and he couldn't be there, uh, then I would. Okay. But as far as the nuts and bolts and mechanics, that was all legislative. Okay. Um, from your perspective, what are some things that you believe were important or some stories about your time working for Stan that you think are important? That I West should... Valley was West clearly Valley, yeah. one of the biggest. What adjectives would you use to describe Stan as a person and a character? Extremely dedicated, compassionate, um, dedicated is hardworking to me. Mm -hmm. um, because he was relentless in that, and just just a very. When he said, "I, I, I rep, I'll represent the district and I'll represent it to the best I possibly can," he did. He did, um, and no. Nothing was too small. No, you could bring the, a problem, and it, it, nothing was that minuscule that it didn't. He always impressed upon us in the district that you treat that person with respect, with dignity, you do everything you possibly can, I mean, even if they're obstinate, and we used to get a lot of obstinate people. Uh, but that didn't matter. You, you gave them the very best that you could, and he instilled that, and I can't think of anyone in his district staff that did not take that to heart. And we tried not to put it on his shoulders unless we absolutely had to. And he knew when we came, if I made a call where one of the other district offices called and said, 
I need help with this. You're going to have to do this and such. So. As long as we told him or gave him the outline of what it was that he needed to do, the, the history of the problem, no problem. He'd step right in. But uh, and and again, that's something that any staff, any congressional staff, would really, really appreciate because there were and I'm sure still are congressmen that don't bother me with that, Pat. No, yeah. Don't bother me with that. N not so. You had his ear and his undivided attention. Um, so I just, I think those were really, really strong quality. And he's still, I mean, he's, he still has that ethic. Um, which unfortunately nowadays, as Stan and I have talked, I mean, we would never survive in Washington today. Mm -hmm. No way. It's too divided. Us and them. And it wasn't that. Back when he was in Congress, there was disagreements, there was screaming and hollering and blah, 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 but we got things done. Do you think there's any way to fix what's going on in Washington I have no now? idea. I think we've gone a long ways the other way. And to pull back, to get everybody treating each other as people, I don't know, it's very scary to me. When you, when you hear particularly the, the language and the viciousness, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. It's scary to be a youth growing up here. You're like, what's it gonna I be? I can like? imagine so. Yeah. I can imagine, yes, that it, that it would be. And some people hold on to that ounce of power with everything they have, and it's hard to get fresh blood and exactly. in there. Yeah, exactly, because those that do come in that, that want to be more moderate, well, forget it. Mm -hmm. You're either us or them. And mm -hmm. it was not that way when we were there, not at all. Um, like I said, Sure, we all they, we had differences and we had arguments. I mean, we even amongst staff type things. But but you came out of the ultimate was you came out with a solution one way or another. It might not be what I would have done, but that's what we did. Yeah, like Stan was um, a Democrat, a Democrat elected in a highly years. Republican area, so there's probably a lot of tension, but also he worked around it, I assume. He worked around it very well, um, and probably worked around it very well because even when he ran for mayor, he made sure that he had and included the people from the from Republican or whatever. They might not necessarily be a registered Republican. But, and he took flack in Congress. We had a couple staff people that were Republican. You would have thought they were communists. <laughs> um, but people got over it. I mean, you know, he said, I hired her, she was the best qualified scheduler, and she, that's, who she, that's what she does, and she works for me. Mm -hmm. um, he was also somewhat highly criticized when we first went to Washington. That's probably part of that conversation is between you and me. He retained some of, um, Congressman Hastings' staff, which, in my mind, was really smart. We came not knowing a thing. He didn't even know how to get to the floor to vote. So we reta he retained staff. I worked in D.C. for the from March until the special election because we didn't have district offices then. Mm -hmm. We didn't open district offices till after the November election. Um, Thank God for those people, because they knew their way around. We certainly didn't, and uh, he took flack for that. But they weren't there forever either. I mean, in fact, a couple of them were very near retirement. He kept them on until they could retire, mm -hmm. and uh, so. What was that like in that? few months after the election in 76 and... Confusing. Very confusing. Um, Stan and I would go to D.C. We would drive down on Sunday and I would be there for 
I think I came back on a Friday and had to go back to City Hall and keep packing the stuff from City Hall until we got that all done. Then once that was done, then I just continued to go back and forth uh, until the general election. And then after that, we sat down and got the, the scheme together for the district offices and everything. So um, I was very pleased to have been able to spend even that short time in Washington. It gave me a real good perspective coming back here. Uh, I'm not a legislative person, so that would not be what I would be interested in doing, but fascinating to deal with those individuals who, who do that. Uh, like I said, all of the casework was done here, so no matter where it came, if it came into the Washington office, it was funneled to whichever district office would address it. Um, vice versa, if it was a legislative matter, that's not something we were versed in, nor should we be. So that went to the legislative staff in, in D.C. Okay. But, but from my perspective, it was great to get that idea because I would hear so-and-so and so-and-so talking about this, and I'd go, I yep, know exactly what you mean. So, so from that perspective, it was, it, it was good, even though I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do that now. I couldn't be going back and forth like that. I mean, yeah, it was tiring. Mm -hmm. But I was a lot younger then, too. And then not only were you guys just getting your feet wet and starting up, you had to start getting ready for the next campaign, for Correct. the next election. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And how did you guys prepare for that election coming up? Well, other than that short period of time, casework was probably the most important thing we were doing. There was nothing legislatively he would get involved in in that very short space of time. The other thing is campaign staff and, and congressional staff, and he truly kept it separated. If I wanted to work on his congressional campaign in November, I had to leave the congressional office. I had to take a leave of absence. Would have had to take a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. He would not marry. Uh, nor was campaign work done on, in any of the congressional offices. We certainly would take information like if you would come to me and say, "Hey, you know, I'm really interested in working on Lundeen's campaign," blah 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 blah, or I'm really interested in making a hefty donation. I'd say, "Well, that's very good." Here's what you need to do. Yeah, we were not allowed to get involved at all. Hmm. Other than, other than, if we wanted to, absolutely. But take it away from the congressional office. Yeah. yeah. And one of the articles that you gave me in the box it was titled, Not Enough Time. And then you guys were always busy trying to um, get things done in the congressional committee. And can you tell me more about your time and some of Stan's ideas within that short that Okay, I'm not following you quite. Uh, you mean back here in the district office? Yeah, what was it like being in the district office while Stan was in office? Well, sort of pretty much what I have been telling you. Um, our, our job was strictly casework. Uh, my job was traveling between the three district offices and uh, representing him when he couldn't be back here. Mm. Um, as long as I had the information and I knew what the message was that he needed to convey, you know, no problem. Uh, so I spent the majority of my time, even though based here, on the road. Uh, Interstate 86 and I became really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> And even, even after the, the district was expanded, uh, we added two more counties after that uh, in the Finger Lakes area. To me, it wasn't work. I mean, you have a district that's as beautiful as that, getting mm -hmm. into the yeah. Finger Lakes area and all in through there. Uh, I truly enjoyed it. And we had wonderful staff. Uh, I truly 
as a district representative, I, I cannot think of any maybe once in a while a little difference here or somebody got their nose out of joint in Elmira. Or, the staff was very, very uh, cohesive. Mm -hmm. we, we knew, you know, we, we worked for him and he was, that's the one we had to, to take care of, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but again, remember, the district was, was kind of insulated. We were insulated in that we did casework and anything else that came up that was not casework related was passed on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you say casework, what were some of the casework that you were involved with? Well, if you're on Social Security and you are having a problem with your Social Security, that's federal. Any fe anything problem that a person might have that's federal related, that's what we did. Um, if you came in and it wasn't federally related, then we helped you get where you needed to be okay. but it wouldn't be something we could we could help with so once we had all the information that we needed um, and we knew where we had to work that case in your case because you were having trouble with Social Security we obviously dealt with the Department of Treasury so the case worker in the district office had a case worker in the Treasury Department that dealt only with congressional inquiries. That's who we went to. Okay. And once you made those connections and you you knew who those people were, that was the key. And that's what we did. Whatever, as long as it's a federal agency, we could help. We could try and help. Or as I used to say, we can help you or we can make things worse. Um, Agencies don't like to hear from congressional offices, sometimes, not all the time. For the most part, uh, we dealt quite well. Once in a while, you'd, you'd get a congressional, or a, yeah, a, a, a uh, agency whose congressional rep, or I forget what they call, they, they had a specific name. But that's who we had to go to. Does to deal with. ever, um turn into legislative ideas? Like if you get something, someone comes in with an issue, oh, yeah. then it turns into... Absolutely. But we make sure that that is addressed immediately by a, a legislative aide in Stan's office in Washington, or Stan himself would get involved. Uh, the West Valley. The West Valley was so big. That legislation was just so big. Um, one staff member uh, Mary, Mary Ann Richards, and it really, she was the key. She was the lead person on what anything to do with West Valley legislation. She did all the research for Stan and all of the contacts that had to be made in in D.C. And she's just one person. So depending on what the legislative issue was, would depend on who in D.C. was working it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. And we worked well with the with the uh, with the staff in Washington. Uh, we got together twice a year. District staff, Washington staff, um, and uh, you learned a lot. Um, it was again one of those times. I'm sure you're from, you get a group together. Yeah. You you have all kinds of active activity and stuff going on. So. And it was very helpful, very helpful for us out here and very helpful for them sitting in D.C. They need to know what this district is and what it's all about. So and The people so, here representing absolutely. the district. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we're a pretty rural district. Yeah. And yeah. you've got some staff people in, in Washington that are like, what? What do you mean you don't have mass transportation? How do people get around? Really? Mm -hmm. They didn't? They were so used to commuter trains and buses and what have you, they didn't understand that we don't have that here. So. And I think in one of the interviews Greg Peterson had, was something Stan was talking about is the difference in agriculture that some people didn't understand. There were protections needed for the grape industry. And Correct. 
Right. Yep. Just like in other parts of the country, you have the peanut subsidy, you have mm -hmm. the whatever subsidy. Um, yeah, I mean, we we need help, but it's an entirely different, perhaps, you know, a different subject, yeah. for example. Yeah, because we're not wheat, big wheat farmers. We're not enormous corn growers like in Nebraska and Kansas and stuff like that. So while certain things may be needed, remember, we're, we're dealing with something smaller than. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's why those meetings were really so helpful, where everybody got together, where the district staff got together with the D.C. staff. Very helpful. And did these meetings take place because Stan Lundin forced them to take place, or was it just because both groups decided it would be best for... Oh, no. Or no, that was Stan. That was Stan? We, we need, yeah. It was we, probably part of his the problem understanding, solving. The understanding, we, we as a staff have to understand each other's because we didn't understand a lot of legislative stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't mean a thing to us. <laughs> but we learned. Yeah. yeah. We might not be ever be experts, but at least we understood what it was that legislatively he was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I can't think of any more questions off my head. Is there any? I'm trying, yeah, I'm just trying to think, is there think? anything? Yeah. Maybe more that you should be? aware of. He was back here as often as he possibly could. Um, he would have to address, he didn't do a lot of uh, traveling outside of the district, but that would be something, again, that he would have to enlighten, because I don't remember, like, if he took any trips here, there, you know, that, that, that type of thing. I, I just don't remember that. Um, and with us even just talking, uh, it's amazing how much I have just simply forgotten. Uh, and I didn't, the big, the West Valley obviously pops mm -hmm. in because that was such a contentious situation, but I know he was involved in, in uh, but again, he'd have to enlighten you on that, some labor management mm -hmm. at the federal level issues. But, well, I can think of, of things that where he would, he, as a congressman, got involved. Like there were a number of emergency situations back here, the big flooding in the Fredonia area. Mm -hmm. um, and there's where the mobile office, Tom would take that mobile office, he'd go to Fredonia and he'd stay there for as long as it was necessary, like helping people uh, once the Small Business Administration, for example, would come in to do loan applications for people, determine eligibility and stuff like that. Um, trying to think, there was another emergency out in the other end of the district, but boy, I don't remember what that one was now. But same thing, Tom would load up the van in the way he'd go, uh, or if somewhere along the way he'd pick you know, pick up Stan and off the, the Stan would travel with him for something like that. Um, the, the Fredonia one comes to mind because I spent quite a bit of time there um, as well. But I can't think of what might be some of the others. I know the other end of Chautauqua County. Uh, around uh, Cataraugus Creek. That flooded constantly. That was another uh, point. Uh, where Tom spent a lot of time. Um, West Valley was Cataraugus and Allegheny. Um, trying to think if anything big, like around the corning. I don't know. Again, that would be something Stan would have to address. He would know any involvement that he had with corning. And there might have been some. There might have been issues that got him involved. So, but that would be something he would have to... Were you involved at all, um, trying to think of what it was, when Stan was trying to get Cummins to, he when was he mayor. was in a mayor, when he was mayor and he was Oh, I do. Get... I remember that because I remember the phone call. The phone call? Ooh. Um, don't ask me to remember who it was that called. He was busy. I remember that. He was in a meeting. And... Um, 
I don't remember who the person from that was representing Cummins at that time. I have no idea. And that was one thing. Stan did not like to be interrupted. Mm -hmm. And this was a toughie because it really sounded like this is a call you better take now. Might not present itself again. So I rapped on the door and apologized and just said, I think you really need to take this. And that was one of the initial contacts from the Cummins people. Uh, Joe Jirasi, Stan, and there were others involved uh, with that as well, but they were the movers and, and the, that initial contact that came from, from Cummins. Is Cummins still in Jamestown? Mm -hmm. Lakewood. Lakewood. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, fantastic community oriented company. Just, they're, they're, they're just so conscious of things going on and they support other things going on. Yeah, I don't know what we do if something happened to Cummins. Yeah. We better hope it doesn't. Fingers crossed, like, stay here. You're staying. Stay. <laughs> So uh, that's probably like another... This will um, give you a lot of good background okay. that I can't remember. Oh yeah, I do remember that. I remember when I first went to work for him when he was mayor and he told me his salary was $10,500. And I said, what? Huh? And he said, yeah, that's what, the, that's what it pays here. I said, ah, God, that's ridiculous. And he goes, oh. I tried to get a raise, but council wouldn't go for it. And he said, so I made him an offer. I said, okay, no raise. How about providing me a car? Oh, no, we can't do that. Oh, my. That was just, it, yeah. it's always been a joke. But 10 five, I said, are you crazy? 10 five. oh, wow. <laughs> well, on the other hand, it was 1972, but still, that, I mean, that was a pittance for me. Like 10000 no, 10 five. Oh. oh. Yeah, a lot of names in here, too, from Labor Management Committee and stuff like that. This will give you a lot of good background. And it's been a while since I read this. I don't know how much they get into West Valley or any of that, but this will be good. Like I said, for people like me that don't have memories. Anyway. I do um, like books. I trust just books trying. more than the internet. I like, I like books a lot mm -hmm. more than the internet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I know. I'm I very speak. happy to see, see that. See, I still <laughs> like to have... Yeah. Really? And probably yeah. always will. I mean, like, it's just me. You know that an editor has gone through that, that the publishing company more authentic and reliable than yeah yeah I know site even mm -hmm. if it says dot gov I'm like oh, yeah, are it, you all right well it's just just real quick I don't mean to get away from it but um, I have subscribed to the Post Journal for years and years and I I continue this year to just get so disgusted with it because it, it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller so. I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work, fine, I'll resubscribe. So I canceled my subscription, and I'm reading it on, online. It's okay. But I still miss, even though that paper gets thinner and thinner, I still miss in the morning not picking up that paper mm -hmm. and starting to read through it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, like I did this morning, I sat in my chair, and, you know, went through it all and read what I needed to. But it's just not the same. Um, the other thing I think that might lend some idea of who he is and what he's all about, when uh, he left the state after they lost the election in 90, whatever it was, 94, I guess it was, um, Stan, I don't know, are you from the area? I'm from uh, Machias, New York. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah. 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 Well, they know Machias very well. Yeah. Uh, More so like Delavan Freedom, but okay. It's okay. Right in the middle of all of those little yep. towns. Yep. Yep. By Schwab I know Farm. Do you know Schwab's? Schwab Farm. 
Hmm. No. In Machias? Yeah, in that area in Cater. Okay. Area. Okay. Yeah. N no, doesn't ring a bell with me right at the moment. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the biggest farm I could think of. Okay. Okay. Um, he didn't have to come back here. And one of the things around here that just rankles me, this is probably, be again, between you and me, there is a lot of, there are a lot of people in this area that get real hyper. We're exporting everybody. We're exporting all our talent. We're exporting, we're exporting. They don't come back, they don't come back. I don't, when you graduate from high school, and you're going to go on to college, okay, somewhere, wherever, St. Bonaventure. We'll use poor St. Bonaventure. That's what I want you to do. I want you to leave here. I want you to go to St. Bonaventure. And I want you to complete whatever it is you want to do there. And I don't necessarily want you to come back right then. I'd like you to go out to various, wherever you, wherever you would like to go, whatever comes up. And I would like you to experience two of those, that, and maybe move on two or three deaths. I'd like you to come back then and bring that wealth of experience that you have gathered as you have worked here, here, and there, wherever. That, to me, is what's important in bringing young people back here. Um, so, long story short, Stan didn't have to come back here after he lost the election in, in the state. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact he had several very good job offers. But he chose to come back here, and he chose to come back here and get involved in an area and an issue that we really needed, some guidance and some somebody to take a hold, and that was the health. That's when he started the Chautauqua Healthcare Network. So I sometimes get kind of irritated when, when people do criticize our area for nobody comes back here. Well, yeah, they do. And it's, you know, a, a, a lot of young people come back here. In fact, I think we're very fortunate right now. We're getting more young people mm -hmm. coming in. Um, and it bothers me when I hear people criticize like that because, hey, they're here. Recognize it. Give them credit. So, but, so that's the other thing. Uh, Stan never forgot Chautauqua County. Even though he left here, went to D.C., went to Albany, he came back here and tried to fulfill a need, um, which I think he did. Mm -hmm. And got out of it when he felt he needed to. It was time to retire. To get out of it. Yeah. Which is fine. I think that's what we all should do. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, but that's just sort of another insight, is that he just is that type of person. And yes, now he and Sarah spend a certain amount of time at their home in North Carolina, but they also have a residence here. And I don't think he could ever give that up. Mm -hmm. I really don't. This is home. Uh, and he feels a commitment. And he still gets involved. I mean, he's been involved with the Jackson Center. He's mm -hmm. been involved at Chautauqua Institution. Fredonia University. Fredonia, yeah. So, uh, just that kind of a guy. Yeah. Like, definitely something I want to highlight in the exhibit, too, is his personality mm -hmm. and how caring he is for the community and the people and his devotion mm -hmm. and dedication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. Definitely want to capture that. When, him. again, as I say, Certainly didn't have to do that. I mean, you know, probably could have gone off and done something elsewhere. But, uh, and I think, to me, that characterizes him since the time I've known him in the 70s. He's just been that type of person. Mm -hmm. um, I like the frankness. I like the fact that he listens. Um, and may not agree, and that's fine, uh, but he always gave us the opportunity to say this is what I think, or this is what we think you should do, or da-da-da-da-da. That way, 
he got feedback from a lot of different sources. Some of it helpful and some of it obviously not. But, mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, I know during his congressional time, I know <laughs> of a lot of congressional offices that did not operate that way. Very, I'm the boss. Just do your work type thing. And this was not the case in our office, never. So more friendlier dynamic and... Much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, M much, much more willing to, to share, to uh, criticize if criticism was necessary. I mean, he wasn't shy about, you know, saying, are you crazy? Or no, that's not a good idea. Or, you know, haven't you thought of this and this and this? Obviously not. <laughs> so anyway, that just kind of summarizes, I yeah. think. That, well, uh, I just will always have a lot of respect for his whole family, mm -hmm. his whole family. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of any other questions. And um, are are you following anything uh, during his time as lieutenant governor? Yeah, if you have anything to add from his time. Yeah, and I probably would not, I wish I could help you there more than say what information he will give you. And he can, he can probably recommend, if there's somebody else that he feels you need to be gleaning information from, he would be the one to tell you because once he was there, um, I was a regional rep. I, I basically was doing exactly the same thing that I did in, um, in the congressional office, except um, I was doing it for a much uh, smaller area. It wasn't the entire, what, what was the entire congressional district. Um, so my interaction or direct was, and not direct a lot of times, and it w certainly wasn't as uh, busy my dealings with the uh, lieutenant governor's office as it was with the congressional office. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, we had our meetings um, whenever he was back here uh, for whatever function was going on. We, I was responsible for him. There were only two of us in the office. So uh, we were responsible for all the briefings. Governor's visit, we did all the briefings. Um, so, but it was entirely different. He was covering an entire state as opposed to the congressional office covering a specific congressional district. Mm -hmm. So my knowledge of a lot of things on the state level were not directly connected with the lieutenant governor's office. So mm -hmm. that's why he would have to be the one that would probably give you the most information on it. Okay. Well, definitely write that Yeah. Down. Because that's an important aspect. Mm -hmm. okay. How long this How Mario long? and Stan were in that position? Lieutenant for, Governor? Yeah, for a few. Uh, I think 10. 94. To nine, no, 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 no. 86. I'm sorry. 86 to 94. 86 to 94. Mm -hmm. so that was almost, that's almost. Would that be two terms? No, four years each. So eight years, two terms would be eight years. So eight years. Yeah. Yeah. And the third, the third eight year, or the third four years when they lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I will share this with you. At the time he decided to run, and like I said, I didn't know Stan Lundin from a hole in the wall, I was working part-time for an attorney while I was going to JCC. That attorney, who is now deceased, was the chairman of the city committee, city democratic committee. And I do distinctly remember, while I was working in, in that office, this young whippersnapper coming in, made an appointment, 
to talk with Mr. Sigworth, the chairman. And this guy just whipped right in there. I mean, he's, and it was Stan. Yeah. And that's when he came in to talk with Mr. Sigworth about getting, about running for mayor. Because, now don't you dare tell Stan this. I can just remember thinking, who is this guy? But hey, he was right out of college. He was 20, yeah. what, 28, 29 years old, okay? He'd, been, he'd come back here, and he was working in uh, uh, Al Ford's law office when he came in to introduce himself to the chairman and let the chairman know that he was going to be the next mayor. Because I, 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 I can remember it when he left, and I'm, I'm looking at Mr. Sigworth going, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I was going to say, you know, you really need to kind of go back, but I wouldn't know who who you would talk to about this other than Stan himself. I don't know what when he decided that he should be mayor of Jamestown, mm -hmm. or or when he figured, okay, now's the time to do this. I, I don't know. I guess he would be the one that would have to tell you. I just remember he was extremely exuberant, and I'm going to conquer the world here. And I guess that kind of attitude you have to have if you're going to do that. Just like when he decided to run for Congress. I, he came in one morning. I mean, we knew. He was on vacation. He wasn't even around here. And when the news broke that Hastings was resigning, that opened up the seat. And I don't remember who was working in the, in the, in the mayor's office with me. And it might have been Rich Wang. Uh, he did speech writing and stuff like that. Came in that morning and said, you know, we better get a hold of Stan right away. That seat is vacant and I know he's going to want to run for it. And I'm going, yeah, right. And so Rich, it was Richie. Richie, I don't know, must have called. I mean, we certainly didn't have email then. Must have called Stan. Or, yeah, I would have to have. And, uh, Told him, and, and Stan's like, really? He's leaving? And he's going to resign? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, my goodness. So, anyway, your message got out. Yeah. Uh, both Richie and I, I distinctly remember the morning he came back from vacation, because we hadn't seen him for a couple of weeks, opened the door to my office and said, we're running for the Congress. And Richie and I were like, what? Mm-hmm. And that was it. I mean, that, he said it, and he did it. And that was it. So, I, I, I suspect, although I don't know, I suspect that was how he handled the, the mayor's thing as well. Just one day he says, okay, Al, time. I'm going to run for mayor. So, yep. That was awesome, and thank you for everything. I